Welcome back. Welcome back. It's time for Top Story Spotlight. And tonight we welcome to the show a very special guest, veteran ocean explorer Tim Taylor, who has just made possibly the biggest discovery of his career and bringing a mystery deep beneath the sea to life. Tim and his team have just discovered this right here, the USS Harder in the South China Sea, 3,750 feet underwater. The USS Harder, one of the most iconic submarines of World War II, it sank the most Japanese warships and received the Presidential Unit Citation, an honor given to military units for extraordinary heroism against an armed enemy during World War II. This is the ninth World War II sub discovery Tim has made. He has dedicated so much of his career to discovering, educating, and preserving the lost 52 submarines from World War II. In 2021, he was awarded the Distinguished Public Service Medal, the U.S. Navy's highest civilian award for his work on this mission. Tim is also the CEO of Tiburon Subsea, an ocean technology solutions platform. And tonight he joins Top Story in studio. Tim, first of all, congratulations Thanks. on this discovery. Let's talk about the big news first, which you, you're revealing exclusively here on Top Story. You found the USS Harder. How did this happen? Well, we we target we, we go out looking for submarines, lost 52 submarines, and we targeted several in this area, and we were looking for the harder. Uh, we, we specifically went out uh, this year looking for the harder. It is, it is such an iconic submarine. And these are images that you captured with your team. Right. When you saw this, when this comes back, and what is that, an octopus yeah, on, on yeah. top of the, the hatch there? Yeah. When, when you see these images come back, what does it feel like for you? I, I know you've done this a bunch, but it has to be special. It, it is. We, we, there are men here. This is a tomb. This is a, this is a graveyard. And submarines are designed to keep water out. They keep men in. And, and one simple example is when they found the USS Monitor after 150 years and they, they brought up the turret that the, the, the Park Services did, they found two men still entombed in that. So this. This is, these people are there. They're inside this. And you do this in part for the families, right? I mean, these are families, military families, who lost their loved ones, and they never really got closure because... They died at sea, and they were buried, as you mentioned, Welcome back. It's time for Top Stories Spotlight. And tonight we welcome to the show a very special guest, veteran ocean explorer Tim Taylor, who has just made possibly the biggest discovery of his career and bringing a mystery deep beneath the sea to life. Tim and his team have just discovered this right here, the USS Harder in the South China Sea, 3,750 feet underwater. The USS Harder, one of the most iconic submarines of World War II, it sank the most Japanese warships and received the Presidential Unit Citation, an honor given to military units for extraordinary heroism against an armed enemy during World War II. This is the ninth World War II sub discovery Tim has made. He has dedicated so much of his career to discovering, educating, and preserving the lost 52 submarines from World War II. In 2021, he was awarded the Distinguished Public Service Medal, the U.S. Navy's highest civilian award for his work on this mission. Tim is also the CEO of Tiburon Subsea, an ocean technology solutions platform. And tonight he joins Top Story in studio. Tim, first of all, congratulations Thanks. on this discovery. Let's talk about the big news first, which you, you're revealing exclusively here on Top Story. You found the USS Harder. How, how did this happen? Well, we we target we, we go out looking for submarines, lost 52 submarines, and we targeted several in this area, and we were looking for the harder. Uh, we, we specifically went out uh, this year looking for the harder. It, it, is, it is such an iconic submarine. And these are images that you captured with your team. Right. When you saw this, when this comes back, and what is that, an octopus yeah, uh, yeah. on top of the, the hatch there? Yeah. When, when you see these images come back, what does it feel like for you? I, I know you've done this a bunch, but it has to be special. It, it is. We, we, there are men here. This is a tomb. This is a, this is a graveyard. And submarines are designed to keep water out. They keep men in. And, and one simple example is when they found the USS Monitor after 150 years and they, they brought up the turret, the, 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 the Park Services did, they found two men still entombed in that. So this is, these people are there. They're in 
inside this. And you do this in part for the families, right? I mean, these are families, military families, who lost their loved ones, and they never really got closure because they died at sea and they were buried, as you mentioned, in this tomb at the bottom of the ocean. Yes, yes. I, it, we, we found nine submarines or eight submarines and a destroyer, but we found 452 men is what we found. How did you get into this? Why did you get into this? This is a journey. I, I, I guess I started with my, my dad fought in uh, Okinawa. He was in the invasion force of Okinawa uh, late in the war, uh, was kamikaze. And that generation does not speak, didn't speak about the war. All right. So so when I started, when I, when I discovered the R-12, which years ago you, yeah. you covered, um, we began to talk about the war and we began to share. And he, the harder was a special one because it was lost about the time he was shipped overseas and he, he knew about it. And it was a, it was a legend in, in his time. So uh, sharing this with my dad and, and moving forward, it was kind of the foundation of starting the Lost 52 Project. And, and how did you get into, uh, is it ocean exploring? Is it marine biology? What, what exactly was your profession? And how did you get into this as we look at one of the vessels you work with? Well, I, I've done this all my life, um, but I've always been on the cutting edge technology, whether it's deep, deep mixed gas rebreathers, deep, up to 300 feet deep filming, uh, with d designing and building digital cameras, uh, running operations for other people. So we, we, we were field guys. We're out there doing and looking and essentially diving wrecks up to 300 feet deep. And then when you want to go deeper, it is, it is mechanics and robots now. It's, what have it's, you it's, learned yeah. searching the, 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 the floor of the ocean, the bottom of the ocean? Uh, the, the ocean, the, the ocean is, is our life on this planet. People don't understand that uh, there's so much involved with, uh, with um, uh, fisheries and energy and weather. Uh, we are just starting to study them. We are just starting to understand them. The blue economy is, is like a one and a half trillion dollar economy. And by, 19, uh, by 2030, it'll be a three trillion dollar economy. Now that, that, that's, that's blue economy, that's a lot of stuff, but a large part of it is collecting data and understanding what's out and, there. And you, and you hear a lot of times that, that we, look, we know less about the oceans than we do about space. Correct. You hear that all the time. Is that true? And most of the things that live on the, on the, on the planet live in the ocean because it's, it's three dimensional. It's not just the surface, it's, it's all the water depth. There's life all the way to the bottom. The Tim, some of our viewers may recognize you because because when there was that horrible incident with, with the expedition crew that went to go see the Titanic and, and it imploded, um, where do you think that type of sort of exploration goes? Because that was, I, I think, a turning point for the industry. And I know you came out, you, you were very concerned that people were going down and not taking the right precautions. Yes, I, I was. And, and I, I find it from, if, if you spend it on what I've just accomplished and what we've just were sharing today, um, these sites are war graves, right? So you and I can go over across town and visit Grant's tomb. We can go to Arlington Cemetery. They are kind of tourist attractions, right? But underwater, there's no one watching you. A tourist or a pirate can go to these sites and, and vandalize them. And so it's a kind of a double-edged sword. I discover these things, I put them on the map, and now they become targets. So I, I'm very much a proponent for protecting these sites. Uh, underwater tourism has to have some kind of regulation on it. You can't just have anybody just get these numbers and go out there and dive these sites. So it, it's, a, it's a big thing. We're opening up the world for people to see these places, and they need to be protected. Inside this part of the studio, we are, we are covered with images, both the images that you found, but also vintage war images. And, and I'm looking over your shoulder, and I can see all the sailors yep. that, that were on that sub. Marine. I know you've had a chance sometimes with your other discoveries to meet the families. You haven't met the families here yet because you're just announcing you found this one. When you meet these families and they see the video and they see sort of the last place their loved ones were alive, what, what is that moment like? It, it's, it is cathartic. It is, it is extremely emotional and, and it's, it seems cliche, but it's closure. These men went missing in the war. It's, it's a classified as missing. It's not gone. So everybody thinks they're missing. They, they, these people grew up, these children grew up thinking that their dad's going to come home because he's just missing. Uh, and, and it is uh, understanding and seeing where they are uh, is, is 
full circle. We're, we're writing the last chapter of these heroic guys and hopefully retelling a story of these men in these submarines that will resonate with the next generation. These men fought for, for freedom and a free country and democracy in this world, and, and they gave the ultimate price. And it's, a, it's an amazing story. People watching this may be curious, how, how does this work? Is it a business? Are you funded? Does the Navy pay you? I mean, it's got to be millions and millions of dollars. It's, uh, it's a lot of money. It's philanthropic. Um, it's philanthropic. Yep. So, so people donate money so you can do this. I, I have, I have a, an organization that does outreach, ocean outreach. It teaches and, and shares this information. Our expeditions are kindly, uh, I, I was able to raise money with uh, like-minded people from the, the New Orleans and, and other areas that are uh, sold their businesses and have lots of money, but they're into the World War II. They've bought, w sponsored wings of the World War II Museum down in New Orleans. Uh, so the, the, They've chosen to donate their money because they know the importance of this. Yes, and it, and it started out uh, with our first find, and I, uh, my wife and I, Christine, uh, did a, a documentary on it, and, and when we were presenting it at a trade show, Paul Allen's people came to us and asked us to s put a project together, and, and I, was, I was putting this together anyway, so we started our, our presentation to Paul Allen. He went a little different way he he decided to put all he was going to give give me a, a an underwater robot that he was uh, moving off his ship and putting a new one on and fund my expeditions uh, and then he decided to put all that on his ships the project was well received by Paul uh, but in in the course of presenting we we ran across other uh, benefactors that wanted to put some money into this so we we they have contacts in the industry and we did real well by by Performing right. and finding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. With results. Correct. What, what has been the, the strangest or most amazing thing you've seen that deep in the ocean? Oh, God. Um, the man's impact. You, you, you'll be on these things and you'll see Coca-Cola cans, all right? So it, it just shows you how small the ocean is getting. Things find their way to these, these locations. So. And then, so now you, you're also on, on our show tonight to announce that you're, you're sort of transitioning, right? You've done this for so many years since I've met you at least for more than a decade. And, and now you want to sort of change gears. Why? I, I realize finding all these submarines is, 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 a, is a valiant mission, but we're not going to be the only ones to find them. Other people are going to find them. We've learned so much. We've developed our own patented technology. And I started a company, I started a startup to, to build these systems and make them available. What else can they people. be used for? The, the whole blue economy, everything from security on pipelines, count fisheries and, and maintenance, shoreline scanning and, and understanding. Autonomous vehicles are like satellites. If we want data from the ocean, we have to have hardware, and hardware has to be in the form of robotics. Uh, and the more we can get them out there in, in mass quantity, the more we're going to learn from How the deep planet. can your technology go right now? Right now, we're focused on about 400 meters, but uh, I'm working with 6,000 meter systems, so we'll be able to build deeper. 6,000 meters? 6,000 meters, most, almost full ocean depth. Wow. No. Okay, Tim Taylor, congratulations on this big fun. I know there's going to be a lot of news. Thank you. But once you get to, to meet the families and talk to them, and thank you for everything you've been doing yeah, thank and you. locating these, these war relics. We appreciate it. Excellent.